Hello, everyone. Welcome to the next gaming series. DB Smiley here, bringing you a banger of a Sea East matchup. Taking a look at the standings for Sea East right now. Uh, keep in mind, every team getting three points from the forfeit of Witch Rhythm. Uh, but we are looking right up at the top of the standings. Phoenix Rising Citrine versus Zul'jin Distillery. Number one versus number two. Now, keep in mind, teams have played different numbers of matches. So, Phoenix Rising Citrine has played three matches, not counting that aforementioned forfeit uh, of Witch Rhythm. House of Shez, Bunker Fun Time, and Maple Syrup Bandits. The, the House of Shez win, not looking as good with some of the struggles we've seen from Shez. But uh, Bunker Fun Time did get a win over... Your math teacher, so that Bunker Fun Time win, uh, pretty good. That said, a couple of 2-1s. They have dropped some maps. Meanwhile, Soldier of the Steel, no maps dropped, uh, but their wins, not as impressive. Maple Syrup Bandits, 2-0. Uh, Protectors of Ire, 2-0. I have those teams in lower tier of the division right now, if I'm honest. Um, so, this is really the first opportunity... For Zul'jin Distillery to grab kind of a signature win to start building their season around. They obviously have a lot of expectations moving into Sea East. I was a little bit more hesitant on them. Right now, again, looking good, but the win quality isn't there yet. Maybe it will be there uh, by the time that we, uh, we finish tonight. Phoenix Rising Citrine, of course, undefeated in the match score. And with, you know, so so taking a look at the maps, we see uh, Zul'jin Distillery chose to ban out Volskaya and Battlefield of Eternity. Phoenix Rising Citrine banning out Alterac Pass and Dragonshire, two more macro-oriented maps. Um, first map, uh, Phoenix Rising Citrine won the toss and actually chose map, which is a bit unusual, but not unheard of. Uh, is going to be Brax's holdout, and we've Seen some Braxes hold out uh, from them before. See what happens here if they can uh, continue their success on that map. But uh, just waiting for the teams to give me the all clear. We got a couple of people, Donde is dying off to the Banyo. Hopefully they will back soon and we'll be able to get into this series. Um, joining me tonight is no kittens. My kitten field has gone fallow. No, where are my kittens? Oh, God. I don't have any kittens tonight. Bad, bad day. Bad day without kittens. Sounds like a, a really sad foreign film. The day without kittens. And it's about children dying because they all are. Um, not the, not that all the children are dying. I mean, all foreign films are about kids dying. Or apparently dancing provocatively. Either or, really, apparently now. Um, but we will see as we get set up for the match. A little bit of a, of a delayed start here. Um, see how many people are in yeah, we got a couple of viewers. Anyone, uh, anyone got a prediction for tonight? Anyone, anyone in chat got a prediction? If I had to guess, Citrine's really good on the team fights. I haven't seen XGD's macro in a while, but I don't remember it being particularly strong. I'm, I'm very open to being wrong on that. Um, Phoenix Rising Citrine's macro also admittedly a touch questionable. Um, and it, it got exposed in that Bunker Fun Time match. They did get the win, but the Dragonshire game, I mean, they got out macroed really hard. Admittedly by some cheese, Samuro and Murky, but they really want to look for the fight. And if, if XGD can be a bit patient, I think, uh, they'll be able to... Um, just waiting on a member of 
Phoenix Rising Citrine before we start. Cast in a match earlier tonight uh, in B Southeast was ZZZ versus Beyond Gaming. Not a particularly great match, if I'm honest. Um, Beyond Gaming dominated that very hard. All right, so Delta Sniper picking Citrine on the basis that he, Delta Sniper, has watched them once, but has not watched Zuljin Distillery. Therefore, XGD must be the worst team. Fair enough. Um, yeah. We are still in a hold pattern. The second time I've been in a really long hold pattern before a match today. Kind of unfortunate. Um, normally I don't pick up this early in advance because I just don't have that much to say. Probably take a brief break while we wait for these teams to get back. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Alright, we're back. We're getting into the match. Here we go. Brax's holdout. XGD versus Phoenix Rising Citrine. Map number one of this series, as picked by PRC. It's going to be XGD's first pick. What will they grab? Bands to come first. Chromie can, of course, be a pretty big problem on this map. And uh, just as I say it, there goes the Chromie ban. Um, Phoenix Rising Citrine, is there anything they scouted that they don't want to play against? ETC available. They're going to ban out the Rexar, not wanting to deal with that in the offlane. Reasonable decision. X 
are feeling pretty okay right now, all things considered. Gonna be a May ban? No, oh, it's not gonna be May. <coughs> Next ban to come out. is the diva so diva is available this week in a, a little bit of diva we've seen a, definitely a few diva bands what is xgd gonna pick first to open up here a couple of different ways to play this they're gonna grab the anna first uh strong healer flexible healer in terms of you can generally you, you want some kind of spell caster but uh Death. Okay. So Deckard ETC grabbing their healer as well, wanting to put priority onto that Deckard. Still think it's strong despite the nerf. Uh, there's the Kalthos to pair with. The spell uh, damage potential that Ana can add. And a Garrosh. Very strong tank onto the map. Uh, definitely a tank that Rain has liked to play as well. Rain does have ETC, which is generally a, uh, a, a pretty solid counter to the Garrosh. And make it rather difficult uh, for Garrosh to step up. The roll getting banned out. Denying yet another solo laner. On the other side, what ban will come? It is the Li Ming ban, which we saw a little bit of Li Ming from Ace in our last series. Played rather well, if I'm, if I'm a straight shooter about it. Next two picks to come for PRC. We'll start to see uh, some damage here. Rainer, Goldan. So Goldan for the uh, lane clear. The lane pressure as well as the potential zerg clear uh you have rainer as well who can siege up effectively as well as provide some burn with the exterminator hyperion of course a pretty good tool on this map also that knockback for the garage never a bad choice it's about Last two picks is the Leoric Tychus. So it's going to be the Leo solo lane. Leo typically doesn't lose to too many people, save for um, ranged, but he also doesn't really win a lot. Uh, and there's the Tyke or there's the Samuro, which we saw a bit from Asthma Chad on this map <coughs> the last time out when they played. Uh, Bunker fun time it was fairly effective, though. So, you know, seemingly, uh, Zul Zuljan Distillery hopefully could, for their sake, gonna do better against the spammer than Bunker Fun Time did. They they really struggled quite a bit on this map against Phoenix Rising Citrine. Um, but go ahead if you're if you're here if you're watching. Who do you think takes this game? We'll go ahead and put put the drafts up again for you. Who do you think takes it? Let me know. I have a Chloe kit. Chloe. I have a kitten. Kitten. It's a tiny little baby. Their newest kitten. Oh, oh sweet cuddly. We're about to begin. What we cat? Oh, she's adorable. Look at those little head buds. All right. Well, let's go ahead and get into the game. 
She is so adorable. I have my cursor guides on. Let's correct that. Systems online. As we introduce the teams Ten on the seconds. left, Zul Jim Distillery. It's going to be DeWitt is actually not on Five, Anna. DeWitt four, is on uh, three, two, one. Garrosh. Forgive me. Led, who initially had locked Garrosh, is actually on um, Anna. We have Ankle Shot playing Kael'thas and Be Fresh on Tychus. So a little bit of a swap. Cowboy Kyle still in the solo, but changing out the tank and the healer. Give it up in chat for Chloe Kitten, by the way. Ooh, immediate flip onto ETC. There's the Anna grenade with the Tychus. A pretty classic combo here. ETC managing to power slide out, but you will see those flips into the sleep dart Anna grenades quite a bit. Um, Decker does okay against that, though, because you can throw potions near the target, and they can try to wait for the Anna grenade to fall off. Uh, that time, ETC checking the bush again, runs square into DeWitt, who just throws him away. Uh, there's a power slide through, trying to look to get some damage on DeWitt. Healing coming out. Take a look, level 1 talents. Extra throw distance coming out from the garage. Wanted to look for Gold Dan there, but uh, actually getting turned around on with some fair amount of damage. Uh, Globe being focused by both teams at the moment. Decker doing a good job getting some potions ready. Meanwhile, up in the top, Samurai, Leo kind of just focusing on clearing the lanes. Samurai already in position to channel. Uh, ooh, ETC's in a bad spot. Can he get to a potion time? No. Maybe he could have turned around and found it, but there was that combo we talked about. ETC, the first death. DRC, uh, finding themselves uh, down here a little bit for the time being. Asmo Chat, though, currently having top point. Not an emergency, but now having to back up the tap that will allow Leo to step up and start trying to contest this. Samuro, though, can step right on, scare him off. Um... Firebats being taken by the members of XGD, putting those into lane. Uh, ETC working on the swap here. Sleep Dart is on to ETC. There's the gravity lapse. Uh, Garrosh looking to throw ETC back in, who no longer has the power slide and can't get to the potion. So a good recognition there. Perhaps an overcommitment by Rain on the P-slide uh, to get away. Maybe need to save that in case of the throw. In either situation, that is the second death now for ETC. Gonna have to get that under control. That said, Samuro uh, helping PRC stay okay by controlling the top, but it is now a full level lead in favor of Zul'jin Distillery. That is not a good start. You are PRC. PRC has done fairly well on this map. As, as yet, they actually have the only channel progress, 16%. But if they don't stop uh, stop these deaths, it's going to get harder. Minigun popped by Tychus there, but here comes the power slide. Good knockback from Rainer, but once again, ETC the focus. And down he goes, and they are just picking on ETC at this point. Deckard not really with those burst heals. Um, has Ruby available now. But that is where Deckard can kind of struggle sometimes, is you have to plan where your potions are going to be. And Garrosh does a good job disrupting those plans, and now we finally see Garrosh rotate top to get some channel progress for his own. Now looking to get on to Samuro. Throws the correct one away, actually, but Asma Chad able to just stealth out and go back. Uh, ETC, though, moving on to the point. They're looking for Tychus. Can they get this kill? There's the face melt. Not enough burst damage. Stoic on a different target there than the Tychus, at least does force Kel'Thas out. But XGD actually stopping the channel progress fairly quickly, 12%, and now getting channel progress of their own. Uh, that said, they are losing the race to seven, so they may have to back up here in just a bit. ETC gets dismounted by the Flame Strike. Living Bomb there, gonna be okay for now. DeWitt throws out the Q, doesn't find ETC. Rain doing a good job holding the point. And uh, already it looks like we're going to see the channel get finished here. And indeed we do. So up in the top, much weaker Zergwave. Down here in the bottom, here it comes. 
Watch for this initial burst of Baneling, see if they can maybe get some damage off of it. Elfoss takes some. Baneling's hurt. Baneling's absolutely hurt. Ooh, power slide, looking for Garrosh. There's the root, but there's that armor that Garrosh is so well known for. He is very low, but means he's harder to kill, not easier. Goldan is actually rotated top. Wants to get on the Cowboy Kyle and gets the kill. Seeing that, Garrosh starts to step up. Members of PRC wisely backing up, but they managed to close this XP gap to a much tighter margin. Down to maybe about a quarter of a level. And that will certainly help them as they now rotate into their Bruiser camp. Uh, Fireback camp is back up. Or XGD, we'll see that if that occurs. Uh, quest completed now by Samurel up in the top. That is Way of Illusion. And uh, that is extra attack damage. Never a bad thing when you're an auto attack hero. But uh, looking at the walls, I mean, actually, if it, it seems like XGD has traded out fairly well into this. When you look, the bottom, bottom walls are about the same health. Top walls, barely any damage on either side. Firebat's now put in the lane top. Rest of XGD putting in the Sentinel camp. Now I'm going to try to maybe get some siege pressure in the bottom lane. Neither team with 10 yet. In the 6 minute mark now. The map that tends to take longer to get to 10 just because, you know, only 2 lanes of XP. Samuro goes down at the top. Big pressure there. All 5 pushing in. And that will be some Miss Soak on the side of PRC. But they are looking to try to get this fort. It's, it's going to take a beating. It may not survive this. Uh, it probably will. It's going to survive. But it's going to be very low. On the other hand, rotation coming. Now looking maybe for the Leo here. There's the power slide. He does, of course, have the spooky ghost available. He's going to walk away. Fairly safely. Garrosh now rotating towards the top. PRC looking like maybe they want to flip the lane, get the four-man into the top. They're off map at the moment. XGD going with a very aggressive boss play. Uh, Samuro has spotted this out, though, seeing that attack from the boss. And so this will now likely be a push over the boss, but level 10s are here, and I don't think PRC wants to take this. They do not. That is boss is going to push into the top lane where one cannon has gone down. Pike is currently controlling the top point. Samuro should be able to channel the bot. Ooh, Deckard may be in a bit of trouble. Good face melt from ETC. Saves Deckard's life. And this cannon tower is dropping rather quickly. Uh, Samuro has control of the bot, so no channel progress at the moment. Level 10 about to kick over, but it's going to take a bit. Garrosh looking at the flanking angle. Finds Deckard. There's the stun. Sleep Dart comes in. There's the Anna Grenade. Mosh comes out. Can they turn this around? ETC is low. There's the Horrify off the Mosh. Can they find a kill? They haven't found one yet, and I don't think they're going to. Sleep Dart onto Raynor. Puts him in a bit of an awkward position. Goldan gets hit by the Flame Strike, then thrown by Garrosh, and down goes Goldan. That is two kills for XGD. They're looking out of pressure this advantage. They have grabbed the top fort. Samuro did get the Leoric in the bottom during all of that. But now we'll see if XGD, they're going to rotate bot. They're going to cap this point and likely push in this bottom fort. PRC going to need to send people top. Stop this channel progress. As uh, they actually didn't leave anyone on the capture. So that's, that's precious seconds. That they did not get channel progress, and they're only going to be stopped at just six percent. Could have been, could have been a bit more. ERC still hovering around the top. ETC grabbing a globe, trying to get that prog rock done. Ooh, Garrosh gets dismounted by Goldan. ETC trying to control the bush. Rainer gets stunned. He's going to get flipped. No. Good breaker there by uh, 
Raider forced the flip onto ETC. Taunt comes out. ETC, though, gonna be okay. Big four man horrify. Can they do anything off it? Sleep onto the Garrosh, but he immediately gets woken up. Flame Strike is gonna force Stoic out. Tychus is on the chase. Can he get the finish? No. The potions are there to save him. But Ace gonna have to self sustain just to not die. The Living Bomb ETC is not gonna get away. And once again, I mean, a, a big horrify, but it just feels like PRC not getting onto the same targets. And it is costing them. Anna with some good heals there, absolutely. As yet, this has been XGD's game as far as the team fighting goes. Which is something I, you know, I expected. They're a good team fighting team. Um, Rainer is going to channel the top for the time being. Uh, but not get there in time. So 100% Zerg Wave coming to bottom, which is a softened up fort. There is no wall here. This fort is absolutely going to go down. Bruiser Camp as well going to supplement. They could be actually looking for a keep here. Especially if they catch anyone out on the side of PRC. XGD looking strong. Hyperion coming out, trying to zone out the members of Zul'jin Distillery. Phoenix goes in, kind of as a, as a counter to that. Walls are starting to fall. Garrosh going to become a threat. There's Garrosh thinking about mounting up. Is mounted now, looking at Stoic. Good knockback there. Power slide on through to prevent the throw. Deckard Root going to buy some space. DeWitt once again looking for Stoic. Finds ETC, but the face melt throws that, uh, throws that throw, I should say, off. But still, they managed to grab the keep here. And that is uh, a really, really good situation this early into the game. They're continuing to pressure up, though, and Garrosh has now gone under uh, core. That is definitely a risky situation. Did not get punished. Seems like PRC may be a bit afraid to engage this here. Uh, tries the power slide. Oh, but Kael'thas was out of range. Maybe she could have been able to turn around and get onto ETC there, honestly. But uh, they're saying, you know what? We got the keep. We can just walk away. And they're, they're going to play this one safe. My kittens over here are playing uh, a lovely, lovely game of tag. Let's check on them real quick. There's Chloe. She's playing tag with Colby Bear. Ooh, but back to the game. Oh, no, that's not the game. DeWitt may be caught out here. There's the Horrify. Armor comes in. Ray's trying to get on back line. Once again, Ankle Shot just trucking. Oh, and the Big and 2 might have the re-engage. There's a Sleep trying to get Rain out. Rain blows the low HP Death Rattle Mosh. It is not enough. And now Stoic is completely caught out. Has the knockback. Might be able to escape. Root comes in. So far, this is a 4v5, but look at this. All the health bars so low, but no one target getting punished. They want to get onto the Garrosh, but that Garrosh is just so hard to finish. Now XGD with an opportunity to get the uh, Talentier lead here, and a big one as they're up a full two levels. Trying to turn their attention to the Fire Bats. But back to the game everyone really cares about. Hitting tag. There it is. Firebats put into the top lane. They start to paint this map blue, and here comes the boss. Boss should go to top lane. And uh, PRC is is kind of they're gonna. It looks like they want to contest this boss. Garrosh is just gonna throw them away. There's the entomb. Samuro has gotten onto the point. If ETC can get in with the big mosh, they might have a chance. There's the horrify. The boss has been captured, however. ETC, I should note, did not have Mosh. And uh, now trying to turn around as Samuro has been dropped, but I don't think ETC's getting out of here. And now with the Firebat camp pressuring top with the boss prepping the lane, rain going down, this might be game. Easy channel coming in now for... Uh, XGD, PRC just kind of compounding mistakes here. Uh, trying to force onto the boss without the 16s. Into the Garrosh, he's just going to zone you out. 
uh, pretty hard as, as, as occurred there. Channel progress underway, 50% and climbing. Firebats now into the bot lane. There's a couple Katas down here as well. The thing's just compounding for PRC. They need to get back and clear this, or they are going to lose a lot of health potentially onto the core. Here they come, but now they're going to have to... Uh, Samuro just trying to be annoying here, trying to stall, but obviously not really a threat to do anything. Uh, this will at least give PRC time to clear this bottom lane. But the top lane is very exposed. Garrosh is going to come down. Where are they going to go? Looks like they're going to just decide to go top, make sure they secure keep, and then maybe look for a game if they can find that pickoff. A couple of scouting Samuros go out. And uh, down they go. Rotating towards the top is PRC. This is kind of uh, Custer's last stand here. Root hits on to three. No real attempt to follow up there. Garrosh has blown unstoppable. There's the power slide. The keep has gone down. ETC gets thrown into the back. He is stunned out, and down goes ETC once again. And, you know, we talked about it before. Deckard just going to have some trouble against this Garrosh combo. Garrosh is just going to throw you away from the potions. There is a root, but I don't think it's going to be enough. Too little, too late. They will get a couple of kills, but they will not save this core. And XGD takes game number one. Looking good doing it. All right, Zulchin Distillery with a really strong outing in there. They wanted to pick off ETC early in the fights, and they absolutely did that. Um, taking a look here at the post-game stats, you can see ETC just getting popped seven times there. Felt like it was really hard, and normally you think like, okay, ETC good into Garrosh, but just felt like... ETC would go in, and there was no one to dive with him. I mean, there's no bulky health on the other side to, to go in with ETC. And if ETC's alone, he's kind of squish. I think that's what we saw there. And, you know, Samuro can help you in the solo lane, but in the 5v5 fights, honestly felt a bit like a liability there. Definitely dominated solo lane, but unable to get the pressure onto the Ana. Onto the Kael'thas, onto the Rainer. But a very well-played Garrosh there by DeWitt. So we're going to get set up for game number two, and we'll be right back, everyone. Stay tuned, and thank you so much for watching.
All right, everyone, welcome back to the Nexus Gaming Series. DB Smiley here as my kittens continue to run back and forth. If you watch close, you'll see uh, you'll see Chloe kind of running around over here with Colby. They're they're playing uh, playing some kitten tag. Um, but here we go, game number two. It's going to be Tomb of the Spider Queen. Uh, PRC choosing to take first pick. We'll hope if that change maybe changes their fortune and takes us to a game three. We'll find out. PRC has had some bad games. They've come back from them before. We saw that against House of Shez. We saw it also against uh, Bunker Fun Time. That game two against Bumper, Bunker Fun Time specifically being very rough. But uh, it's hard to play against that Garrosh on a Tychus. Just as a combo, that threesome is is devastating. You add Kael'thas for the follow-up Gravity Lap CC, and there's just not a lot you can do if your healer doesn't have a cleanse. And Deckard, of course, did not. And I'm going to be honest, I think Deckard has just fallen off. Um, Diva banned out once again here. You know, I'll say it. I just I don't think Deckard is particularly good with the current uh, patch. Um, you know, currently only a forty-five percent win rate. Yeah, that's um that's the litter room back there. I I I cut a hole in the bottom of the door just to um just that way this I don't have to leave the door cracked for them. Um, no, it just. The door is is most like there's a little bit of wood in the bottom, like a wood frame, but it's mostly like hardened cardboard is actually all it is. So easy enough to cut through. Um, back to the draft though. The uh, Diablo band, as is the Anna. Um, Zuljin Distillery saying, "Look, if if we can't have it, you can't have it." And you know that Anna healing, anti healing grenade is just one of the most devastating tools in the game. Um, when used well, Urel gonna get banned out. Uh, Urel can be very strong on this map, just because you you want a lot of characters that don't die here. You able to hold on to gems, and now that Joanna is a much more mortal than she used to be, strong. I I'm Chromie makes it through the the ban phase. She doesn't make it much farther, and that's not really a surprise. Chromie feeling just absolutely op at the moment, and on this map in particular. With its choke points, if you get a uh, if you get a web weaver face, she's just gonna push in and make your day miserable. That said, only a forty five percent win rate, which is a lot lower than I expected. Kelthos May coming out, May one of those new heroes. Taking a look at her current stats, you can see sixty one percent win rate, and that's with a fifty percent popularity. That is actually insane. Uh, yeah, you're right. Anti-healing grenade on May is devastating. Rain getting onto the garage here has a stuke off as well. Potentially follow up, although that root combo off the garage is a bit trickier to land than uh, some other potential tanks. Um, Chromie, though, of course, going to be the focus, trying to just. Control space, again, if you get a web weaver phase, that gate in front of you just feels like such a hindrance. You almost want the enemy team to take the front wall down because there's really nothing you can do uh, to push up while the front wall is up. Chromie will just annihilate you if you try. Uh, Deckard banned out here. A lot of priority onto the Deckard uh, from Phoenix Rising Citrine in, in really every match I've casted them. This doesn't feel like with the ruby change it has as much impact as he Duke off, though so, uh quite like at the moment. Zul has been banned as well. They're gonna go with the Phoenix Uther. Now Uther is in an interesting place right now. He did get some changes that make his W build much more able to sing, uh to solo heal. Not great, but as you can see, I mean, the win rate, and I, it didn't show long enough, so I'll show it again. Win rate has improved dramatically as a result. I mean, 63% because you can play him as either a tank or a healer, and you can actually do solo on both now. 
Um, Malphael Rainer. So I like the Malphael uh, and the Chromie into the Uther. I suspect that is a tank Uther. Um, or an offlane Uther is, is my expectation. And I, I, but then again, I mean, I don't know. They, they could try to go solo, but Kael'thas and Phoenix both need healing. I, I, they're going to go Leo. Hmm. So they get the Kael'thas again. I thought the Kael'thas was extremely well played, uh, by ankle shot. I'm, um, in, did we get a little switchy switch going again? It's, it's happened before they've caught me off guard. Um... There's a bit of self sustain. I mean, I mean, Phoenix can just back up. I guess. I just, I'm a bit worried into the Chromie. How you're gonna heal through that much poke damage? You counter out the Malfeo well. I actually think Malfeo might benefit from going Tormented Souls this game. Uh, taking a look at the draft here, I, I think that might reasonably be the play um but we'll see as we head into game number two zuljin destui looking to close out a domination prc looking to take us to a game three uh give me your thoughts who do you think is gonna win in chat we shall see um Introducing teams, DeWitt is on May, Be Fresh on the Phoenix, Led on the Uther, Cowboy Kyle once again on Leoric, and Ankle Shot once again on Kale Thoughts. It is Zul'jin Distillery looking to protect their winless, or a lossless record, I should say. Uh, Stoic on Rainer, Rain on Garrosh, Lamort on Stukov, Ace on the Chromie, and Asmachad on the Malthael. It is Phoenix Rising Citrine. Like, again, the armor helps, but the thing with Chromie is she plays much more like an AoE sustained damage dealer. She kind of plays like a, a better Gul'dan right now. And I'm just a bit worried about how Uther's going to be able to keep up with that. He is going into the solo healer build, so the W build, so keep an eye on that. Uh, Garrosh choosing not to flip anyone there. I don't know if maybe he flipped the minion and I missed it. Malfail, Leo in the bot. Malfail, the formula is simple. Clear the lane. Don't get hit by W. Leo wants to not lose. Here comes the rotation. The wit gets the flipped out of the way by the Garrosh. They are going to clear the lane. Uh, interesting choice here by, uh, actually, they, they double clear the mid. Um, and actually, it looks like this is a little bit of a misrotation right now from PRC. You want to really be mid first in this situation. Uh, they are going to leave Chromie top to soak, but, um, need to be a bit careful, as now they are going to take some damage to their gate and towers, and Chromie in a little bit of an awkward spot. Uther is going to look for the stun. Does find it. Is DeWitt going to be able to boot back into the stun? They do. That might be enough to kill Chromie. It is not. DeWitt has to blow the ice block, but is DeWitt going to get out of there? There's the stun. If Garrosh had the dot damage on stun, that might have been a kill, but that comes uh, after the next Q hits. You need to have five stacks. Garrosh gonna hang around, maybe look to re-engage top. Kelthos has mostly cleaned up the middle. Uh, having to step up very aggressively for the gems. Garrosh going in very deep for Uther. Not sure if that's the best uh, use of that engage. Living Bomb needs to be careful about the spread. And now with Rain Low, this is an opportunity for XGD to get some gems in. Checking on bot lane, we can see that XGD did in fact get the siege camp in bottom, but it has been cleaned up by Malthael. Malthael, though, very low on mana at the moment, does go back for the tap. Keep an eye there. 
Lead playing up very aggressively on this Uther. But XP favoring XGD at the moment. Uh, does get the flip onto Phoenix under tower. He does manage to blink out of there. Stukak going with that fetid touch build. Uh, could see targeted excision or long pitch at seven. If he goes target excision um, and, and is able to land it, they have way more sustain. Uh, DeWitt actually taking a lot of damage there. Going to be able to self-sustain, though, uh, with the ice block. Defresh now needs to be careful. They're trying to bait out his blink, I think. Oh, and Befresh manages to get the angle there by just enough space. Rain maybe needed to stay a bit tighter there. And uh, Befresh does escape what was a pretty tricky looking situation. XGD with 12 gems dropped. Uh, PRC only with 6. That said, Asmachad doing pretty well here. Has that die alone. That is certainly going to truck into the Leoric quite a bit. DeWitt trying to drop 17. And he gets them in. So that is 29 gems now dropped. Level 7's coming in. XGD with that slight edge. Rain's still holding up here. Steps up to stun the... Uh, excuse me, to stop the channel of Uther. Gets stunned by the Uther. Now Rain looking to drop. Chromie trucking out a good amount of damage here. But low on mana. Level 7's finally coming in. Touch of Death, the choice here. Um, going with the healing reduction. With that Uther, Uther, a burst-oriented healer, sure. But that does not stop the armor, nor would it stop a good D-Shield. Uh, assuming that is the choice. Although, admittedly, they don't really have a D-Shield target. Uh, but it's always okay for the save. We do see the targeted excision coming out from Stukov, but doesn't have 15 stacks of Fetid Touch yet, which is really what you want to see to get max value. But that said, uh, Phoenix Rising Citrine does manage to get their gems turned in despite that deficit. And they now have an opportunity to push up a bit. With this Chromie, ooh, good separation on the Kel'thas. Breaker used, but it's not enough. And first blood here at the five and a half minute mark. Heads over to PRC, and they're looking for the Rewind. Breaker available, uh, or Cleanse used, not clear which. DeWitt, though, is in a bit of a sticky wicket. There's the throw, and no Ice Block available. DeWitt goes down. And those are two big kills for PRC, giving them a chance to do some damage. That said, their Web Weaver already pretty low here in the top. It has fallen, mid getting polished off by Phoenix. And bottom polished off by the Leoric. They can get walls. It would be a big advantage, especially with that Garrosh. No walls to dismount him. See what happens. So now, moving in for Bruiser Camp. Nobody's soaking at the moment, though. On the way to level 10. They're, they're going to want to get that quick. Uh, nobody's stalling in turns. I could get could get a time trap pop there. It is not. Bulk of the gems currently sitting on Defresh and Cowboy Kyle, although I think Kelthos has a few himself. Actually, Led, excuse me, has a few. Could have finished that channel. Ooh, now caught in a time trap. Not the Oh no, Stukov got the timing. Uh, and ooh, that might actually be enough. Oh, the cleanse was used too early. Uther's gonna come back. He used his breaker just a little bit too early there. And that rewind, a bold choice into Uther, but it paid off there. And that will stop the turn in. The gems were at least picked up for the most part. But now an opportunity maybe to catch DeWitt out here. Ooh, Garrosh didn't quite execute the throw stun like he was trying to. Asma Chad gonna drop 16. The Wit's gonna step up very aggressively to try to stop it, but didn't get the auto attack in in time. Romy, meanwhile, clearing the bot. Level 10s are here, by the way. It is Warlord's Challenge, Hyperion, Last Rite, Flailing Swipe, and the Rewind. 
versus Divine Storm over the shield. Uh, Entomb, Purification Salvo, Avalanche, and Phoenix. DRC right now up three kills. They do need to stop this turn in from DeWitt. 19, that would be enough. Leo having a hard time. He has 19 in hand, has a turn available. But Asma Chad keeping him honest. Allowing a focus here onto the mid lane. And uh, actually now with a turn in available. Ooh, if they get May here, that would be massive. And they do. They're trying to step up. They're trying to look for these gems, but have they overextended? Divine Storm tries to buy space, but Phoenix goes down. He had 32 gems in hand. Uther grabs the 20, carrying 40, but is not going to get out. Last right's going to secure the finish. That is 40 big ones on the ground, and if these do not get picked up, that is going to be a massive deficit for XGD to overcome, and they do not. Stoic does not get healed in time, unfortunately, for the members of PRC, but nonetheless, those deaths absolutely massive as while they still manage to get the turn in they now have no gems in reserve more or less on the side of xgd only 13 from elthos meanwhile prc well on their way to a second uh turn in and have quite a few in the bank ready to go garrosh stepping up looking for the earthbreaker doesn't find it Dukov does have the root combo. Blows the flailing swipe after being caught in the entomb. Needs to be careful, though. They're going to look great right into the fray. Oh, that snowball was going to catch Dukov out, if not the Divine Storm. That was one of the plays of the match there from Rain with that into the fray, saving Stukov's bacon. Now, taunt onto Kael'thas. Great silence onto the rewind point and a good punish. And those breaker... They feel like they have a forever cooldown. Great time trap is going to isolate May. Does manage to walk away. Last right's going to be nullified out by the shield from Ice Block, but Ice Block is broken quickly. Ooh, Garrosh is in a bad spot. There's the time trap. Divine Storm. Garrosh is not going to get out of this one. Only eight gems. They do get the turn in on the side of PRC, but now find themselves down a hero here. Kael'thas comes back up to rejoin the team. <laughs> Looking for the Entomb maybe on the Mount, on the Mount Thale. He does manage to escape. And uh, as a result of that, this Webweaver phase will not get much. Taking a look real quick, though, at the gem count. Still fairly even despite two turn-ins to one. And so Phoenix Rising Citrine, not in too bad of a spot, but certainly uh, had an opportunity that has now slipped away to really snowball this, I think. As this Webweaver phase, really not going to get anything they didn't already have. Um, all the forts still standing... And PRC, they're going to just peel back. They're going to clear their bruiser camp up. And uh, despite two turn-ins to one, it is actually XGD with the macro advantage now as they have top fort down as well as mid fort uh, basically on its last leg. Breathe on it rather fiercely and it would secure the kill. Yeah, I, I, I kind of thought the D-Shield would be valuable for that as well as the rewind i'm always a big proponent of the d shield uh oh aggressive turn here attempt oh the entomb catches out rainer there's the snowball separates out rainer but the big warlord's challenge actually might enable rainer to get out rainer now in a good position to maybe turn around some damage of his own he is gonna drop divine storm was used there but may goes down so it's a two for one no a one for one at the moment they didn't find another kill off that i was surprised i thought I saw someone else go down for XGD, but they did not. Um, one of those situations where snowballing away a single target actually can save them. Maybe you want to snowball out the rest of the team. I think uh, DeWitt recognizes that's what occurred there. But a great Warlord's challenge all the same. There's a flip onto Phoenix, but 
trying to maybe get a chance for Malfail to go in. If he can stay on Phoenix, the last rights could be useful, but Phoenix able to blink just out of Malfail's range. Doesn't have the added range on the Wraith Strike to stay that stay extra sticky there. Most of the gems handed in uh, on the side of PRC. If Beefresh can get these four in, well, gets interrupted by Chromie, but at what cost? Chromie in a bit of a bad spot, now caught in the Entomb. Blows the timeout, however, and Garrosh is in great position. Great silence from Stukov. Rain is going to fall, but they do manage to kill Kel'Thas here. Snowball comes out. Oh, that might have actually saved Stukov. Cowboy Kyle goes down. Uh, Wailing Swipe tries to buy space, but Phoenix was in a good spot to not get knocked away. Stukov definitely not getting out of that one. Snowball didn't uh, save Stuke off there, did put him in a spot to get the finish, but once again, not really uh, dominant fights from XGD, but they are scraping away at this, and ooh, Stuke off great knockback there by Stoic. Stoic with good timing on these knockbacks. XGD now with an opportunity to push in this top keep. They're going to have 4v1 here. Rainer needs to be careful. Oh, the, the res in tomb. A battle cry in Tomb uh, does not uh, does not hear the Rainer just barely out of range. The Entombs have been on point, and it feels like, despite the kill, despite the early lead, Phoenix Rising Citrine just not really having the macro play at the moment to get much off their victories. That one death on Garrosh right as the second turn it occurred also haunting them a bit as a what could have been. That that Zerg or that uh right away largely nullified as a result. They will have an opportunity here, but now all three lanes pushed. So I think it would behoove PRC to play this patient, not look for the immediate turn in. Rather try to get the lanes pushed out, try to get some semblance of control in the map. Maybe look for a pickoff opportunity before they go for this turn. Lanes are pushed in, which means they actually have a soak advantage here. It's going to be much harder, especially with the Garrosh on the other team, uh, for XGD to soak. That said, Garrosh is about to get... I think Stukov is in a horrible position. Oh, Stukov is going to get engaged on stun. V-Storm, Rainer, and Stukov just get annihilated. Uh, nobody checked the bush there, and they were both below... The Garrosh, that was just a very rough uh, decision there by PRC. You cannot afford to ignore checking that book. And that may be what seals the game. As, uh... As Machad is going to look at Phoenix here. Phoenix, oh, good teleport decision. Finds the space and gets away. And they've just not been able to finish that Phoenix. As Machad looking to try to find, uh... Turn in there... Unstoppable use by Asmachad to get away. This boss is now put into the lane. Really good patience there by XGD. Waiting until uh, they knew they had the opportunity. Three people stacked up. May's going to land that stun every time. Um, yeah, just, a, just a little bit of a awareness mistake by PRC. But that tiny awareness mistake turns into three kills. Turns into a boss, and it now turns into definitely a keep going down, maybe two. Uh, ooh, they do find May. She is taunted. Ice block comes out. The rest of the team, Cavalry, has arrived. It just feels like Chromie has. Oh, they're going for the rewind onto uh, May, but unstoppable available. A lot of resources committed to trying to kill the tank. It has not worked out here. And now Ace in a bad spot. Has the time trap. Good into the fray to buy space. But top keep has fallen as has mid keep. And now level 20 in the hands of XGD. They can afford to stay aggressive here. Stay on this side of the map. Just continue farming gems off the waves. Looking for pick opportunities. now potentially stepping up looking for core they do back up 
What are they gonna do? Are they gonna play camp game? Are they gonna pressure up bot keep? Looks like they're gonna go for bot camp. Bot camp is up. No, 35. They're just gonna drop gems. Wise decision here. Both teams kind of playing around each other. Uh, obviously, PRC has an opportunity to turn in. They do have level 20 now as well. The Wit, however, does not make the same mistake we saw PRC do earlier and does check the bush. Bottom camp is available. Almost a turn in, only 10 gems away from a turn on the side of XGD. They are going to go ahead and grab the bot siege and just continue this map pressure onto the members of PRC. PRC just kind of stuck babysitting lanes at the moment. And meanwhile, DeWitt just doing a really good job keeping vision on these bushes. Ooh, but maybe stuck around a bit too long. There's the Warlord's Challenge. There's the Ice Block, however. Silence underneath it. Can they get the last rights in there to finish? I don't think they can. And now it's actually Garrosh who's in a bad spot. There's the stun. Rewind onto May. Entomb onto Raynor. They do at least get the May down. Asmachad was chasing onto the Phoenix, but now has to back up, getting turned around. Chromie has done so much damage, and it's Kel'Thas is going to go down. And this is the opportunity PRC needed. Can they find another kill? It's going to be a rundown, but I think they're going to get away. Malfeo had to back to deal with Core. There's a Catapult, and they've lost some percentage of health. There's a couple more Catapults mid that are going to have to be addressed. Meanwhile, uh, Bfresh going to at least get the 18 turned in. Only four away. They have three in hand. So if they get one more, they could in theory turn. Meanwhile, Asmachad having to defend core, which continues to get pounded by these catapults. 62%, and now a backdoor could be a serious consideration for the members of XGD. Red Web Weavers are on the way. They need to get a lot done with this phase. Bottom is the most pushed up, but that is where XGD has already come to defend. Looks like they're going to focus top. They're going to try to open up some kind of win condition up here. DRC really can't afford any slip-ups in this situation. Their core shields have come back. Garrosh currently in the mid lane. May is the solo defender, and uh, DRC just giving her a ton of leeway to clear this spider. After they spent so much effort to push it up, they're just completely letting it go. PRC arguably playing scared at the moment in a situation they cannot afford to be patient. The lanes are pushing against them, and they have let a third web weaver phase get no forts. I mean, I don't want to be overly critical here, but you just cannot afford to be that deferential in this situation. You are down five structures. At that point, you, you, it's actually a disadvantage to turn the gems in if you're not going to commit. Snowball, that could be a really bad situation for PRC. Divine Storm comes out. Rain is still alive and actually trades well into the Leo. Tries to stay alive, has the self sustain. Kael'thas does finally get the kill. Oh, but three people have now died, and I think it's going to be a five man team wipe. Phoenix. So it goes down. Chromie, the lone defender. Malthael has returned. Is the Entomb available? Time Trap, not going to make it relevant, but this core is going to drop. Defresh wanting the Chromie. Timeout has been used. Chromie now going to walk away. Red team's and uh, that will be the series. XGD... Doesn't lose a fort in game three despite three turn-in phase 
by PRC, and I think PRC's gonna need to look back at this game and maybe look at some missed opportunities they had. Because they were there, but XGD gonna take this series 2-0, get the domination, and maintain their undefeated record. XGD, doing a good job. Doing a good job there. They they mitigated the Garrosh well. They they controlled vision well, which is something PRC didn't do. PRC definitely had control of that game. Uh and then they let it slip. They dug their way back, but they they just seem too risk averse. And I gotta tell you, with the Garrosh comp, you can't afford necessarily to pass up the opportunities to push up. Not an easy comp to push into the enemy team with, but if you have an objective, you at least have something else to distract the enemy, and, and they didn't take that opportunity. And uh, ultimately, I mean, Uther out-healing Stukov, that is not a great situation. Uh, that is not a winning situation uh, if you have a Stukov. We're going to see if we can do a post-game interview. We'll be right back. Stay tuned, everyone, and thank you for watching. Alright everyone, welcome back to the Nexus Gaming Series. I am joined by DeWitt and Ankleshot of the Victorious Zuljin Distillery. Uh, DeWitt, how are you feeling after that match? Uh, you know, that feels really good to win that one because um, they, coming into the season, I didn't know what to expect from them, but Citrine's shown a lot, uh, even this early in the season. Coming out, getting 10 points, uh, pulling ahead of us in those standings. And, um, you know, it's, it felt like a big game. Mm -hmm. Well, and I, I think, uh, and, I'll, and I'll throw this one to ankle shot. Uh, certainly, I mean, you know, you, you guys have, have gotten dominations in your first two. Again, we're not counting the, the Witch Rhythm uh, forfeit here. Uh, so dominations in your first two matches. Uh, but when you look at kind of the expectation of those two teams that you beat, they were admittedly on the lower end. You guys, I think, needed... Uh, a signature win and you got it so how um you know where do you think this can maybe springboard you as far as the rest of the season goes uh if you want to take that one ankle oh am i having mic issues no i Crap. can hear you yeah, okay all right yeah i think uh it's definitely a little bit of a confidence boost just uh showing that uh our game plan seems to work against a variety of opponents you know uh so it's definitely good to get a good win against a team as good as uh, Citrine. So with that, uh, first map, they chose map pick uh, on winning the toss. They took it to Brax's holdout. Um, something they picked up against uh, Bunker Fun Time, who they played uh, last, last uh, well, not even last week, two days ago. <laughs> and they broke the Samuro out there, and, and like tonight, it did dominate the solo lane as well, because admittedly, it did. Mm -hmm. How do you counter that? Because oftentimes, it feels like if, you lose, if, you're, if you're losing the solo lane on Braxis, it, it almost feels like an exercise in futility. And you guys were losing the solo lane, but you still managed to be pretty 
pretty strong on the map overall. Uh, what do you attribute that to? And either of you can do that. I think I was saying after the game, uh, it was I felt like we controlled it pretty well, but a glaring mistake was me rotating top to help in the solo. Um, I talked to Ripper about this, who helps us with some strategy and stuff, and he always just says sack the solo lane if if you don't have a winning matchup. So that's what we did after the first objective. Mm-hmm. And we got plenty of picks and stuff that let us get camps and kind of very, very slowly and admittedly like frustrating how we had to take the map. Mm-hmm. Um, but eventually we kind of whittled it down to where we had the map pressure um, and they had to rotate around us. Yeah. So um, just sacking the top lane kind of, uh, helped us i think and, and then eventually we got to group up mm-hmm. and our strength was i think our comp was a little stronger in a five man right well and, and that there was kind of a theme tonight and I, and I saw it um both on braxis and on tomb which is when you guys got an objective and and for the sake of braxis meaning you had 100 percent and they didn't you got not you got multiple structures with it it felt like every time uh, you lost the first Zerg wave. You didn't lose anything, save for some walls. You got the second. You took keep. Uh, Tomb of the Spider Queen. You guys give up three Web Weaver phases. Zero structures lost. So, so what do you attribute that disparity in the value you got off with fewer objectives on Tomb even? But h- how you got so much more value off the objectives than than PRC did? What do you attribute that? I think part of that was our draft. That uh, we made sure that we had uh, plenty of wave clear, and that we uh, drafted a composition that would work well, both taking and a wor- and pushing with the objective. So it was a little bit of a focus. I also think, like in um, comms, we before their objective hit, we were trying our best. Like we failed a couple times, especially on tomb to keep our wave clear up. Um, even though they were pressing in, like they were doing right. They were putting pressure on us to to kill us before their weavers hit. Um, but mm-hmm. I think we got a little more pressure on their um, wave clear heroes during objectives than they could get on ours. And so we got the safe clear a little easier. And that, and, and now that we're talking to them, uh, there was a moment in that game where things really went pear shaped by that i'm talking about um you guys lost 40 gems at one point uh and normally losing that many gems on tomb can be like a death sentence and you guys weathered the storm at because that was kind of the low point for you both down you know on, on x or at least if you weren't down on xp you were slightly down it was it wasn't too bad but you certainly were down massively in the gem count having lost 40 how do you recover from that type of situation to ultimately win the map? Um, um, yeah. If, uh, tomb, a lot of comeback is about um, the gems, but at the same time, there are a lot of ways to apply map pressure and kind of the, the whole uh, map is about pressure. Even though it's small, those... Like the the short lanes really make a big difference. So I feel like if you don't lose a keep, then you're always in a, a decent place to come back. Because yeah. once you you get a keep down, the map pressure is really intense. Yeah, we just we just stayed per, uh, patient and knew that they uh, because of our lane pressure that we had good vision on them and it was fairly easy to figure out. Um, where they were so we felt pretty safe just kind of biding our time until we could build the gem count back up all right well it definitely worked out and with that uh congrats on the 2-0 victory getting another three points into the standing notching up to 12 points in sole possession of first place uh with that i mean obviously the other undefeated team that i'm sure you're you're familiar with undefeated on maps as well as next cats i imagine you guys hmm. are, are cognizant of that i've never um, heard of them Never heard of them? Yeah, no. Um, but with that, we will uh, we will bid thee farewell, but but not before giving you a chance uh, for shout-outs. Just one of you can go ahead and... 
Um, shout outs to Nutcracker, our sixth player. Um, always does a great job when he comes in and plays for one of us. Um, Filled in for us shout last out, week. Yeah. A shout out to um, Ripper for helping us with strategy. Uh, and to you for casting. Uh, really appreciate it. And um, to uh, Citrine for giving us uh, some fun games. All right. Yeah, I think that's everything. All right. Well, with that, thank you very much. And best of luck the rest of the season. And with that, we are going to draw this cast to a close. Thank you all so much uh, for coming on this journey tonight. Uh, we will see you all next time. I'm, I'm casting again on Friday as well as Saturday, 323 Weekly this week. Uh, we'll be on Sunday rather than on Saturday, uh, if you're looking forward to that. Now, let's take a hot second. Let's find who we're going to throw it to. Um, one's still alive. This one is still alive. We're going to throw it over to Jazzly. I will see you.